Welcome, my name is Keith and I'm your host. In the qualification drill video that I did, hands down one of the biggest comments that I got was, why am I telling people to not look at their holster when they're reholstering? Now, some of you were pretty militant about it. I get it. Uh, part of it has to do with this isn't a competition. We're teaching people how to survive a gunfight. So I'm going to go ahead and dedicate, you know, this next couple of minutes on why I want you to not look at your holster when you reholster. So do me a favor. If you love Jesus Christ and you love protecting your fellow man while they worship, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment. It all lets YouTube know that this channel is important and it helps other Christians that are protecting the flock know where to go to get more information. Uh, so stay tuned. Let's talk about it. Okay, not everything at church is going to be a deadly force incident. Now, something may occur that you need to draw your gun and take somebody out of gunpoint. But eventually, that's going to wind its way down and you don't need to use deadly force. But obviously, that's a bad person because you're pointing your gun at him and now you have to might have to go hands-on. Let's say he... I don't know, let's just say he was stabbing somebody and you come up and you're about to use deadly force and that guy realizes, I'm about to get shot and he stops and throws a knife down. You're not going to shoot him, okay? But certainly you don't want to take your eyes off that person. So once you have, obviously you probably have somebody there to help you, but you might be on your own. Before you put, this isn't deadly force, you're going to need to put your gun away and go hands on. When you put, when you put your gun away, we don't want you to look and then put your gun away because now you're taking your eyes off the suspect. He can rearm himself and then come at you. So you have him at gunpoint, not a deadly force incident anymore. Now we need to go hands on. You're going to come, reholster, and then go ahead and go hands on and do whatever you need to do, right? But if you come up and draw down and then you have to do this, That's a lot of time. So if something occurs, go ahead, reholster, put it away, go hands on. Where does this come from? I worked undercover narcotics for years. I also train undercover narcotics officers now all around the world. And more times than not, when they draw their gun on somebody, they don't shoot somebody. I've taken people out of gunpoint at least a thousand times. And not, you know, as far as deadly force goes, it's more often than not, you're going to draw down on them and then you're going to have to put it away while you go hands on. A lot of people, when you come up and you draw down on them because something's going on, um, they realize that they screwed up and now they start de-escalating themselves. Put that holster away, but don't take your eyes off of them. Look, if you have to, you have to, okay? A lot of people were worried about you're going to get shirt tails caught in there. I have seen that more than once. Has it happened to me? Absolutely. But I can tell you, I've taken out a lot of people at gunpoint. And almost all the time, I've got to put my gun away now to go handcuff them, to do whatever. And I can't take my eyes off of them. So look, I want you to train to the point where you don't have to look anymore. How does that happen? All you got to do is go to the range. You're going to go to the range and you're going to do, you're going to grab a box of ammo, 50 rounds, load up your mags. And then all you're going to do is the dot drill. And we have the dot drill video that you can go back and watch. You're going to come up, you're going to draw, you're going to fire one round, come back, reholster. Okay. I'm going to go for my second round, draw, fire, reholster. What that does, it makes me fast. It makes me draw fast. It makes me shoot fast. And it, Eventually, I can guarantee you by the 10th round, you're going to start reholstering without looking. Now, for those of you that say it's unsafe, this isn't a competition. I'm training you for combat. You're going to get into a shooting with somebody and you better have it together. Okay. I'm training you not to compete, not to like have the best, you know, IDPA time, IPSC time, whatever you shoot. That, that's not the same thing. That's totally different. Combat is not competition. Here, I'm training you that violence comes to your church. You need to address that violence 
and you need to perform at a certain level, okay? I hope you learned something. This is a short video, man. I'm, I'm assuming this is gonna turn out to be about three minutes. Do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe. It lets everybody know that this channel is important to watch. We'll put out other content in the future. Some of the things that I'm looking at, use of force, identifying people that are armed, suspicious looking people, um, you know, basically how to stop something before it all occurs. Uh, this Friday, my church is doing an active shooter scenario where we're actually doing reality-based training where we're actually shutting the church down, bringing in people to act as role players. Uh, we'll have um, weapons firing blanks so people know what it's like. It's, it's kind of cool because you know what it's like somebody shooting at you without getting shot. And so uh, it, it, does, it does a really good job for, to prepare people for a violent encounter later. Uh, we're going to try and film that and do a little bit of that so we can do a video later on that. Uh, not to necessarily do active shooter training for you, but to see some of the things that we're doing that might be able to help you later. So uh, leave that comment, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and uh, I'll see you at the next session.